celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. I have entitled today's episode, Shaky September. Might remind you a little bit of when we had jumpy June earlier in the summer. Well, things have been quite turbulent, and you know, it's not just those two months. Really, we've been in a period for quite a time that things have not been, oh, I shouldn't even use the word normal, because what is normal? But if we might look back and think in terms of, let's talk about Uranus for a minute. Uranus is the first planet out past the visible planets that we discovered once we had a telescope, and it was discovered around the time of the French Revolution, and America was just becoming a country at that time. And Uranus rules revolution and revolutionaries and people who were rioting. And when we had the 60s, in the 1960s, we had Uranus together with Pluto, which is the major planet of change and transformation. And that kind of launched a whole social movement and it was the time of the civil rights era and almost the eh, incipient stages of the feminist movement. And Whenever we see Uranus strongly configured, we know things are on the move and happening quickly. Uranus rules electricity, and like lightning striking, things sometimes shift quickly. So Uranus has an 84-year cycle around all 12 signs of the zodiac, spending about seven years in each sign. And we're into about the last, almost starting the last of those seven years. It came in in 2011, and do you know the day that Uranus entered Aries? And Aries is a sign that, well, it starts the zodiac, but it's usually like fiery and get things going and you know take off and speed and things like that. The day Uranus came into Aries was the day of that Fukushima power plant fire that followed the tsunami. And of course, that started leaking radiation that probably is still leaking to this day and into the Pacific. And I think some of the irradiated stuff has crossed the Pacific and hit the California shore, oh, probably years ago. But Uranus always keeps things hopping. And for instance, it was starting to get ready to have its big encounter with Pluto, the first big encounter they had had since the mid-60s. And that's when they would have a 90 degree relative to one another relationship called a square. And that ran, well, we would kind of say it sort of started in 2011. It had officially, I believe there was, I think, seven instances of it that ran from 2012 to 20, maybe 15 or 16. Anyway, we say it's officially over, but we're still getting the rumblings from it. And at the beginning of that, we were at that time of Occupy Wall Street. and you know, gives us that feeling again of the masses are restless. And actually Uranus does rule the masses. It rules humanity, humanitarianism, and somehow trying to look at all people as our brothers and our sisters. Sometimes that works better than others. Anyway, we're starting September with this long-term, you know, potentially shaky influence and all it needs is a little bit to like fan the flames. It's sort of like the coals are very hot. And along comes Jupiter. Now Jupiter takes only 12 years to go around the whole zodiac. That's one seventh the time of Uranus. So it spends about one year in each sign and since last fall it has been in the sign of Libra. Now Libra is a nice, peaceful, harmonious sign about marriage and relationships and balance. Well, it hasn't always been like that. Hmm. So we look at Jupiter and think, well, it's the biggest planet. And what does it do? It amplifies anything it comes into contact with. So as it's moving its way through Libra, it will line up across from Uranus and Aries because those two signs are across from one another. And when planets are across from one another, there's a lot of tension and clashing and conflict. You know, 
when we're trying to be very enlightened in astrology. We go, well, the opposition, it brings awareness of self through encounters with other. Well, yes, it does. But sometimes those encounters are pretty clashy. So this is how September opens with Jupiter lining up. Oh, I'm sorry. It's later in the month when it gets across from Uranus. It's um, first going to be across from Eris. Now, Eris, you might remember, is that new small dwarf planet out past Pluto that caused such a ruckus back around 2006 when the astronomers decided they had to redefine what a planet is, and that's all because of Eris. Eris in mythology was a real rabble rouser. She started trouble all the time. Mars is pushy sister, kind of like a female Mars, very combative. And it's very slow. Oh, goodness, 559 years to go around the whole zodiac, spending almost 120 or more of those in one sign, in Aries, where it is now. So Eris has a lot to do with our feminine movement that's going on now. It went into Aries right around the time that women got the vote. And it wasn't even discovered until this new millennium that we're in now, which the 2000s, we say, are kind of the millennium for women because male energy, like a phallus, is the one for the 1000s. And female energy, the goddess energy, is two. So all the years start with two now, and everybody born in this millennium will have at least one two in their one two in their uh, numerological makeup. So if we could say this is a time for women to be um, coming into more independence, coming into more positions of leadership, because Aries is also a bit of a leadership sign. But from the standpoint of the rabble-rouser kind of energy, when we get Jupiter lining up across from Eris, it increases the amount of kind of chaos and discord that's going on. And sometimes when two planets are across from each other, a third one will make a T pattern with them called a T square. And that is what we'll have going on. Now the other one that's making the T is another dwarf planet. It's little Ceres, same root word as cereal, named for the Roman goddess of harvest. And it has to do with, well, what do you harvest from what you've planted and how did it grow? And it has also to do with kind of feeding people, nurturing, support. So we might say that there's some kind of big Jupiter, chaos, eris, about support. And it might come out in the way of discussions about um, Medicaid and what they call the entitlements. You know, in September, once Congress is back from their August recess, we're going to have a lot of discussions about either tax cuts, and mostly they're going to try to be tax cuts for the rich. They're not helping the poor people out too much. Because, um, you know, the poor people don't give a lot of money to the politicians who are voted in and who make decisions on these things. Mm, what a surprise. And there might be something that has to do with, you know, the welfare-ish kind of issues. Um, remember they were trying to cut Meals on Wheels when they brought out this new proposed budget some months ago? That's literally feeding people. That's definitely a serious thing. And we might also find that the heat from the Aries uh, fire sign there is going to be something about destructive fires that maybe burn crops or burn forest, you know, kind of uh, growing resources, which are a series kind of thing too. Or maybe there'll be some droughts that are impacting the um, crops and things like that. So this is a very strong influence from about the 3rd to the 9th of September. And we'll see that it has even um, a little bit of a extra push or maybe um, more news about it when there is a connection to that from, I think, Mercury here. Mm, maybe not. Okay. Check my notes. Hmm. No. Okay. No, but here's what's also happening as the month starts off. So I am recording this now in August on the 17th. And we're having the big eclipse on the 21st, and it cuts right across the heart of America and through the breadbasket. And 
maybe kind of shows how the country is so divided. Um, it has a strong hit to the chart of our president. It's coming right at his rising degree, and that's what has to do with the body. It's in the sign Leo. Leo rules the heart, so he could potentially have some heart issues um, or maybe other types of health issues. Um, sometimes we see that an eclipse doesn't actually bring its effects right on the day of the eclipse. Oftentimes there's something important that comes along just a little bit later when a quick moving planet comes through the degree where the eclipse occurred and sort of activates that sensitized degree. And that's what's happening on the 3rd to the 4th of September, especially on the 3rd. Mercury and Mars are getting together and they're only one degree from that eclipse degree. And then the next day Mercury gets to that eclipse degree. Well, Mercury has a lot to do well, maybe it's the day before. That's right, because Mercury is going backwards right now. It's retrograde. Well, anyway, those first few days of September, Mercury is about communications. It also rules what we read in the news. And Mars is aggression, attacks. So we might say heated words or angry discussions. When we sort of see this is going on at the same time as some of this discord and chaos in a big way about how well are people taken care of, you can see that this might be another time where we're seeing protests, unrest, such like that. Um, and again, if there's something that the eclipse sort of promises, it's likely to more manifest there in early September. So that's, like I said, sort of a rush, rough start to the shaky September. And then, right at that same time, September 6th, we have a full moon. And when we have a full moon and the sun's going through Virgo, the opposite sign is Pisces. So that's always where we have our full moon. And what's moving through Pisces at this point in history for about 12 years or so is the ruling planet of Pisces, which is Neptune. And the moon is only one degree, one degree away from Neptune at this full moon, this harvest moon. And again, we said we're talking about that series harvest goddess. And what are we harvesting? What, what are we reaping from what we've sowed? Now, Neptune in Pisces, it's supposed to be very empathetic and uh, sympathetic to the underdog and people's suffering is discussed and things like this. And Virgo, the sign the sun is going through, is supposed to be a helpful sign of service. And even the spiritual side of Pisces, we might say spiritual service. So at its best, that full moon is a nice time for you to do something of spiritual service in some way, whether it's just on your own or in conjunction with a nonprofit organization or something like that. That pair of Moon and Neptune are in one of these triangle patterns you've heard me talk about called a finger of God, which means circumstances are sort of pointing us a little bit in a different direction than where we thought we were going to be going. So I sometimes call this the divine detour because many times we find it's almost like there's a bridge out. We can't keep going the way we've been going and we need to build a new bridge. And it's doing this with Pluto and Venus in the triangle. Well, Venus is a personal money planet and Pluto is a joint money planet, but those are the two most finance related planets. And when we talk about Pisces and we talk about Neptune, you know, I mentioned maybe spirituality and that's got the idea of faith and beliefs related to it, but we also have fears are a big part of Neptune or Pisces. I usually say it's two sides of the same coin. When you're fearful, you need to flip the coin over and see what do you need to believe in more to make the fears go away. So if we were to say two big money planets involved with a fear planet and, oh, moon is very emotional, that sounds like it could be a market drop where people sell off out of fear. It's possible. I mean, the market's just been going up and up and up and crazy. And usually we say what goes up must come down. I don't know if this relates exactly to something like that or not, but 
It's not out of the realm of possibility. And what makes me think that it won't be horrible, it might be somewhat of a correction instead of a crash, is because Pluto is also involved in another type of triangle, which is a sort of lucky triangle. I call it a quintile triangle, or for short, I call it QT, a little cutie. And it's with Chiron. Chiron shows where the weak links are or what the hurts are, but also what we do to repair and improve and heal those hurts. And they're together with something that's called the North Node, which is kind of like a directional indicator for our spiritual growth. And that's going through Leo. Leo, the sign of the heart, of generosity, of you know being kind of like that king lion that takes care of its pride, its little uh, family grouping. So we might say that there's a sense of, hmm, it's almost like competing energies. One, that T-square was kind of saying like, well, you know, why do we have to take care of everybody? And the other one's saying, well, because that'll make everything better if we do. So we'll see kind of what wins out with that. But there's a very important full moon for you in September. So then the middle of September, not so shaky. We actually have a couple of good things going on. You know, there's this ongoing, what I call a grand trine. Well, not just I call it, all astrologers call it that. Um, and they don't all use the cutie word. But the grand trine in fire signs brings a lot of energy and excitement. And it's in place for months and months from May to early November. And it gets amplified during the middle of September. We have Venus joining in and Jupiter participates in it as well and turns just the triangle into something we call a kite. So I say, oh good, we can take that good energy and kind of lift it up and fly it like the kite. There's even one day on the 13th when the moon is at the first quarter moon and it's going, no, the third quarter moon, it's going through Gemini and it turns these almost like, we'll have two overlapping triangles and it makes a Star of David pattern, but that's very brief and, and usually a pretty good thing. So. Eris, sometimes the troublemaker, is in that grand trine, but Saturn is kind of tempering it down. You think of Saturn and the rings, and they sort of like form a border or a fence. Good fences make good neighbors. So they're with the north node. So it says, let's go in the direction of controlling the chaos or finding ways to use creativity um, in beneficial ways or things that kind of unite people more than um, separating them. So that's very strong from the 12th to the 15th of September and right as it's breaking up or the kite portions, Venus and Jupiter are leaving that pattern, we get Jupiter interacting with Chiron which says either big hurts or big healings but Venus plays into that pattern and so it should be big healings about money matters we might even find this. We might find some kind of a dip, like I was saying in the market, with a really quick bounce back and turn around. Sometimes you even have crazy things. I remember one day it's like the market dropped 300 points in two minutes because some person pushed the wrong button on a big um, retirement fund or something. Anyway, things are kind of okay 12th to the 15th. The 15th to the 17th, we have a sort of mixed messages course correction time. Then the 17th to the 20th, and the 20th brings in a new moon, we have a really tricky thing going on. So, I told you Jupiter is across from Eris with Ceres in that T-square, and quick little Mercury is going to make half squares and square and a halves to that pattern. The whole thing together I call kind of like a nasty knot or snarl, and it's going to have some impact on news or communications in some way in that 17th to the 20th. The new moon on the 20th. Well, the good news about that is, is it's just ahead of the fall equinox on the 22nd. And we haven't had a season start in a new moon phase since sometime in 2015. And the new moon phase is what kind of ushers in new things. So it's good to have a season where it says, well, let's kind of turn the page, clear the deck, get a fresh start on things. So we're hopeful for that. Um, at the time of the new moon, okay, hmm. the sun and the moon are always together at a new moon. They're in Virgo. 
They're lining up across from Chiron in Pisces. So Chiron, nickname is Wounded Healer. Usually some kind of problem comes first and the solution after. Things that are in place at a new moon have four weeks to develop over the course of that lunar cycle. So that's what we'll be looking for during that time. And this is the last new moon that has Jupiter in the sign of Libra. And I think I want to mention this. Usually whatever sign Jupiter is going through, people who have that sun sign find it's a pretty beneficial time for them, or even organizations that are born with the sun in Libra. So for instance, I can tell you that the Astrological Society of Connecticut, which had a Libra birthday, had a very lucky year in the past year. And uh, we're Libras, and here was Jupiter going through Libra. And you know things like, oh, the bulk mail department refunded a $215 fee for us that we turned out didn't owe. Another group folded, went out of business, and gave us a nice fat donation from their treasury. So, you know, little things like that, benefits. Well, now who else is a Libra? Born one week after me, and I'm a Libra, Vladimir Putin. And I think he's been having a great year. Kind of everything that he wishes America would be getting into trouble with, it's happening. You know, we're ticking off our closest old allies and we didn't want to go along with the climate change and we don't want to be part of the TPP and now you know we're all at each other's throats over race relations again. Mm -hmm. He's having a banner year. Well we're going to have Jupiter go into Scorpio and you know if you're ever looking to find out some of the dates and information for this, it's not too late in 2017 to still get the 2017 Janet's Planets, either from me or online. And it comes in an ebook also. And it will tell you just when things happen, like Jupiter going into Scorpio. And that's on the 10th of October, 1010. That should be easy to remember. And it'll be in there for 13 months. So then it'll be Scorpio's time for some luck. But, you know, we said things expand when Jupiter comes around. Scorpio is already a sign of change and transformation, a sign of extremes. So we're going to see things maybe go to bigger extremes than before. It's the sign that rules joint money matters, finances, the stock market, taxes, all of that. So we're going to see things amplified in that arena. So the last thing Jupiter does before it gets out of Libra is it's going to line up across from Uranus, which is where I started at the beginning of this show. And that means big crazy. You know, and Eris is chaotic too. So that's where I said this is shaky September. It kind of starts and ends with some very difficult planetary energies. And because that's in effect at the fall equinox, it has the potential to ripple effect out for the three months of the fall season. So, let's see, in the 20s, hmm, 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 okay, here's what's going on. So not only do we have Uranus with Jupiter opposite, Uranus has just started making the 45 degree half of a square with Neptune, and that kind of means crazy and confusing. This has, I believe, five instances of it that go on until somewhere in the first half of 2019. So these are two slow planets. They're basically in this grading relationship with one another. And I think one of the things this is going to have a lot to do with is more unrest about religious matters because Neptune rules religions and all belief systems. And so we've got rebellion, revolt about religion. You can see where this is going. We've got plenty of discussions about that. The interesting thing to me is, in our country, how many people call themselves Christians but don't live by their Christian values, and that's why I call them hypocristians, like hypocrites. And they think that, you know, the extreme Muslim terrorists are the horriblest thing in the world. And then you hear, oh, well, you know, there's some Christians doing some pretty horrible stuff too, like acting like the Ku Klux Klan. So. Expect some rocking and rolling on that topic for the next year and a half, and some of it really gets shaking a lot at the end of September. You know, when a planet, I won't say slows down to stop, but looks like it slows down to stop, because of the optical illusion called retrograde, 
every one of the planets, not the sun or the moon, but the planets, when they're in the right position with the earth and the sun, they have an optical illusion where it looks like they go in the reverse direction of their usual movement through the zodiac. And they do appear to come to a stop called a station, and that's when they hang out at the same degree for an extended period of time, and that's when they're most intense. So Pluto, being an intense planet anyway, has a station on the 28th of September. That is right just the day after we've had Jupiter across from Uranus in the semi-square to Neptune, which that one's exact the 27th. And who comes in? Ah, Venus stimulates that pattern on the 29th and the 30th. Mars stimulates that pattern on the 23rd and the 24th. I mean, when we're in the 20s of September, it's a very volatile time. And we do have this sort of mismatch degree, uh, excuse me, relationship between Jupiter and Chiron, either big hurts, big healing, hopefully the bigger of the healing than the bigger of the hurts. So I promised to say something about the fall equinox chart. Well, pretty much what I've been saying, the T-square, it includes um, on the actual equinox, Jupiter, Uranus, Moon joining Jupiter, and Ceres in the middle. Well, Moon and Ceres are two of the most, um, two planets most related to women's issues. And relationship issues maybe come in strongly because of the Jupiter in Libra. Aries, the opposite sign, is the sign of me. I want what I want. But Libra says, no, we've got to compromise. We have to work it out. We have to have teamwork or balance. So this could also be a rough fall for couples, and especially couples who are near the breaking point or one or the other of them really needs to kind of go do their own thing. They may not make it or they may need to take a break. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. So we're down to the idea of shaky September. I did forget to mention the fifth is when Mercury stops being retrograde. It's also stopped. So as it comes forward, it's reactivating a lot of things that it was doing in August. We're just rocking and rolling from one crazy thing to the next. It's almost like hmm, outrage fatigue. Strap your seatbelt on for shaky September. We'll hope for better October, and I'll tell you that about that next month on Looking Up.